Today, we're going to make an aquaponics garden. I'm starting with the 60 gallon aquarium setup. Now, if you've been watching my videos, and if you know me, you know that I'm cheap, or I should say, I'm frugal. I wouldn't buy something like this new, it's far too expensive. This is something that I picked up at an estate sale. Now, this 60 gallon aquarium was on top of the stand, but to make my aquaponics unit, what I did was I moved the aquarium from the top of the stand to the bottom shelf, and the top of the stand will make a nice platform for my planter. This is what I decided to go with. I took one of my rain barrels and I cut it in half. Now the rain barrel is a little bit short, but this does allow room for me to get into the aquarium to uh, feed the fish and to, to take care of the fish. And I just took my rain barrel and, and cut it in half lengthways. All right, if you do this sort of thing, what you want to make sure that you do is that you get a food grade barrel. Uh, some of these barrels had toxic chemicals stored in them. Uh, you want to know where your barrel came from. This barrel had a label on it. Uh, a lot of them come with labels on it. Uh, and the label said it was artificial peach flavoring, which means it was used in, I believe it was used in a, a bottling, uh, a, a soda bottling company. And uh, they purchased their ingredients in the, these large barrels and they mix them together to make their sodas. So even though artificial peach flavor is not something I would particularly care to put into my body, uh, still it is a uh, food grade. It is not toxic. Now I'm going to show you how I cut the barrel in half. Um, I searched, before I did this, I did a search on YouTube and I didn't find any really good videos on how to do this. Um, so I decided I'm going to add that part to my video and how to cut a barrel in half. By cutting a barrel in half, you end up with two planters. All right, I wanted the bung hole at the bottom here rather than having it up here somewhere. Now, the trick is to find the half way point to cut your barrel exactly in half. Now, these barrels have a seam going on each side. This is where the barrel is put together. Now, you could slice your barrel in half using that seam, but as you would see, it goes right through your bung holes. So the way that I found the center is I measured from this seam around the barrel to the other seam, found that measurement, divided it in half, and measured that distance from the seam to the side of the barrel and marked it. Did the same thing over here, took my straight edge and drew the line down each side, then extended that line across the top, and voila. Now, I cut this barrel with my cir circular saw. And it cut, it cut just perfectly fine with my circular saw here. I will warn you, a lot of people have this type of blade on your circular saw. It has the larger teeth with the carbide teeth on it. This blade is great for cutting wood for cutting your barrel, you would do a lot better if you use this type of blade with the um, small tooth. Uh, this blade is designed to cut things like paneling where you don't splinter their wood real bad. And uh, I just found that it cut the barrel just perfectly, perfectly easily. All right, once I cut the barrel in half, then I just took some sandpaper, just kind of smoothed down the edges. And using that blade, the edges were fairly smooth, but I took a little sandpaper and smoothed it down the rest of the way. You want to make sure that your plug is in here real tight because when you fill this with water, you don't want water dripping out of here. Okay, my next step was to put the automatic siphon unit in here. All right, I want to find, I turn the barrel over, I want to find the middle of the barrel in this case we can use the seam that will be the exact middle of the bottom of the barrel so measure the distance across here divided it in half to get the center point 
All right, this seam doesn't show up on the other side of the barrel very well, so I'm gonna drill a pilot hole through here from this side. Then I'm gonna use my, I guess it's called a, a hole saw, I think is what this is called. Put this on the end of my electric drill, and I'm gonna drill a hole this size because that is the size that I need for my vault head adapter. And once I get the hole drilled, I will stick the bulkhead adapter through. This gasket goes on the outside. This part screws on the other side. Reverse thread here. And then I'll put an adapter here to put my PVC pipe on. Here's the adapter. This will screw right into this on the inside of the barrel. And this adapter's three quarter inch allows my three quarter inch PVC pipe to plug into it. And I'll tighten this down, of course, and uh, we'll go over the uh, siphon pump uh, a little bit later. Okay, I've got my bulkhead adapter screwed in now. The rubber gasket on the outside, as the instructions say. This part screwed in very tightly on the inside. Now this thing is threaded for this PVC adapter. And I screw this in here and then I can put my three quarter inch PVC pipe in here. Okay, this pipe is going to be my siphon pipe. So I want the top of this pipe, the, the top of this pipe is going to determine the water level when this fills up. I want the water level to be about one and a half to two inches from the top here. I'd say two inches, it's gonna go two inches from the top here. And so that's where I wanna cut this pipe off. So I'm going to, make a mark here. This would be the very top of the container and then I'm going to measure two inches below that mark and that's where I'm going to cut it off and then that way it'll maintain the water level at two inches beneath the edge. Okay, I decided to actually cut off three inches of this pipe so that the top of this pipe would be three inches from the edge of the planter here. And the reason for that is I decided I want an inch of space here uh, above the gravel level so the gravel isn't knocked out of the planter. So we have an inch there, the gravel begins, and then we have two inches of gravel uh, to the water level. Okay, for the next part of the siphon, I have some one and one half inch PVC pipe, and it's gonna fit over this pipe like so. And I'm gonna cut this pipe to where the top is about the same as the top of this one. And then I'm gonna put this cap on the top of this part, which will fit over there like this. And I'll explain how that works once we get this done. this is how the siphon works. As the water level increases here inside this pipe, the water begins to pour inside the drain pipe. But we have this cap on this part to create the siphon. As the water begins to fall down through this pipe, it creates a siphon because of this cap on here and it pulls water up from the bottom and it drains the water all the way to here. All right, then here, once the water level reaches here, 
the siphon is broken it begins to fill again from the water pump and it starts to cycle all over siphons drains to here fills up drains to here fills up drains to here because you don't want the roots of your plants to be continuously soaked in water they'll get waterlogged uh, for most plants that's not good for them the, the plants need air so what this does is it allows some water time for the roots and some air time for the roots now to make sure there's good flow down here at the bottom of this thing and that nothing clogs that up I'm going to just cut a few slits here in the bottom just to allow water to easily flow through here okay I just cut a couple of slits and a couple of notches in the bottom of that so that the water would flow in freely and this basically is the automatic siphon the only part left is this here that goes on the outside like this and this is simply and I'll cut this off level with the top of the planter here and this is left open at the top and this is simply to keep gravel out of this system here so that the water can flow up freely into the siphon so I'll just measure the top of my container here on this pipe and then just cut this pipe off level or just slightly above perhaps um, with the edge of the planter and there you have it there's the siphon pump as far as the inside is concerned and what's left is the bottom side where I will just put another three-quarter inch adapter in here and I'll cut a short piece of pipe here for the drain and the reason that I want this piece of pipe here is because the longer that pipe is here the better uh, suction you'll get when the water starts falling through it has further to fall through to create a better suction uh, to create and uh, maintain the siphon and there we have the completed unit all we have to do is add our lava rock or our gravel fill the system with water put our fish down here in the aquarium we'll put a water pump in the aquarium here with a hose from the water pump coming up pouring water into here this will fill up with water to this point water will start pouring in here where it will drain back down into the fish tank and with this on it as the water starts pouring in here it'll create a vacuum which will create a, a suction which will create a siphon and the siphon will drain the tank all the way down to here all right here air will enter the siphon which will break the siphon well I hooked up my system and filled it with water and I tested it and uh, found out that my siphon doesn't work and the problem is of course this pipe here where the water falls through is not long enough the way a siphon works is the weight and the suction from the water falling through the pipe is what pulls the water up the other pipe on the other side and apparently this piece of pipe here is not long enough the problem of course is my aquarium is right beneath this so what my solution is going to be is I bought some of these elbows 
and I'm going to come off of here and make a longer pipe, sort of a stair step type, to extend the length of this pipe, but going around like this, uh, and we'll see how that works. Okay, here's my solution to the siphon problem. As you can see, I extended the length of this siphon hose, and to deal with the space limitations, I curved it, and I have each section is sloping slightly downward to use gravity. Of course, siphon works by gravity uh, and the weight of water flowing through the pipe. So this is downhill. Once I turn this over, again, this is the bottom that we're looking at. Okay, we'll see how this works.